What's up guys, Robbie Race here. This is gonna be my first glance impressions of the human female soldier, or the human male soldier. They're both the same. So turbocharged um it basically looks like to me guys, this is you know the human soldier mass effect three got adrenaline rush in this game, they basically get this power, which is kind of a definitely much more of a marksman because if you look at it uh we're talking just the basic thing temporarily events weapon heavy armor it's improved thermal clip efficiency and boost weapon firing rate so i mean that's marksman guys basically um again in mass effect 3 the soldier got adrenaline rush which was in my opinion a little bit nicer in a way because it gave you a little bit of your shield back which was cool but you know let's see the other powers now, adren this is cool because, um, you know, and because it, the interesting thing is, since this does not give you your shield back, in Mass Effect 3, with Adrenaline Rush, you would much rather have the recharge speed over the duration because you didn't want the soldier's Adrenaline Rush to last long because every time you used it, you got your shield back. You see what I'm saying? So people didn't really like duration on that. They prefer the recharge. So, or not the recharge, but it was actually between melee damage and how long it would last. And people would go for the melee damage because they just didn't want the adrenaline rush to last a long time. They wanted to spam it to get the shield back. So, in this case, you can get it a faster recharge speed or you can get it to last longer. In my opinion, I'd much rather have this last longer at first glance because, you know, it's, it's just making your gun better for a super long amount of time. So, I mean... Do you really want to spam it, or do you want to just have it on longer? And it says the recharge time is 20 seconds, so yeah, that is pretty goddamn long. Um, 20 would cut into it a little bit, not a lot, but I don't know, guys. It's kind of like, in my opinion, the way this is going to kind of be played is like you're going to be shooting a lot and concussive shotting to detonate, throwing grenades at the big groups or the armed big targets, and then turbocharge is going to be kind of used when you need to really unload on a lot of enemies like a boss or a big group and you know maybe you're out of nades or whatever but just when you want to do a ton of gun damage and then but basically you'll be running around shooting and cuss of shotting hopefully with some kind of priming ammo incendiary ammo cryo ammo disruptor ammo so you get some kind of detonations so continuing my look at I remember this first glance I, I don't know guys i'm just telling you based off my knowledge of mass effect 3 and what i read here all right well the whole mass effect franchise but primarily mass effect 3 so over here, we're looking at gun accuracy bonus, gun stability bonus, and gun damage and gun force bonus. This is obviously really going to highly depend on the weapon you choose, guys. I mean, come on. it's eh. Some guns are really going to benefit from this, and some guns that don't benefit from this accuracy and stability will obviously, this will be the better choice. You know, if you have a gun that's super inaccurate or needs stability, that's the way to go. Pretty simple. Um, clip size again, damp rate of fire bonus clip size. This is again going to depend much on the gun, but overall, I think this power is going to be really insane. It's going to really, I mean, it, it's going to be a very good power for just about any weapon, you know, and it should be. I am a little bummed that he doesn't get any kind of shield boost off of this, like he did in Mass Effect 3, but you know, maybe this power will be. Again, like Marksman in Mass Effect 3, you didn't get any kind of shield bonus or damage reduction bonus. That's just because it was meant to just be a complete annihilating, you know, damage power that turned good guns into amazing guns. I mean, if, if you've ever seen the Turian Soldier or, you know, even the Quarian Marksman in Mass Effect 3 using the Hurricane with Marksman, it's obviously ridiculous. Okay, concussive shot. My instinct is that it's going to be, well, let's look at all the illusions, then we'll, we'll talk. Okay, so direct force, damage, recharge time is 12 seconds. That's, that's up there. Um, all of the powers, recharge time are going to be up there compared to, Ma if you're used to Mass Effect 3, because now they're not on a global cooldown. They're on a, you, you can use powers one after the other. So, of course, the devs are going to make it so that you can't just spam the powers nonstop because you can, you know, use another power. Direct force, direct damage. Okay, so just looking at 350 damage. That's not a bad damage number, guys. Again, I think basically they, they got did away with Carnage from Mass Effect 3 and just kind of made Concussive Shot um, a beefier power. You see what I'm saying? They did away with Carnage, but now Concussive Shot does more damage. Because um, that's a pretty big damage number, 350. Um, okay, so... 
direct damage, uh, recharge speed versus power cell capacity, knock down enemies 100%. I, I don't know if that really matters if you should be doing more damage to the knockdown enemies. I mean, hopefully, if you're shooting at and priming with ammo, by the time you can cut the shot, that detonates and just one hits them. But let's see, you know. Um, recharge speed, uh, we're looking at 10 seconds, no, 12 seconds. And you do want to spam this power, guys. So, I mean, this might be nice. Um, but this gives you power cell capacity five. I, I'm assuming that means you can have a ton more grenades. That's pretty got. Yeah, that is what it means. So, I mean, that is really good too. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it all depends. Like, do you want to be spamming grenades or do you want to be spamming this power? It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, radius versus direct damage force. I'm definitely going to probably go for radius because inherently this power seems to have no radius. So, being able to hit more than one enemy, you know, two meters, basically we're talking two, possibly three enemies. That will be much more useful than having a little more damage to direct force, in my opinion. Um, damage versus shield, damage versus armor. A decision that is really going to depend... Well, oh, yeah, I, I highly recommend armor damage here, to be honest, just because this is a ranged power. It's not like... You know, on the human vanguard on Nova, I went for shield damage because all the minions on the cat and the, the, draw, the machine team remnants seem to be using shields, and then you can't really know if the boss is effectively too much. Um, against the Merc group, you know, obviously armor would be better for the Nova. But anyways, getting back into this guy, since this is a ranged power that you're going to be spamming, I definitely say go for the um, armor damage. And again, considering that you're going to be using some kind of priming ammo to shoot the enemy before you concussive shot to get a detonation so you'll already have whittled down their shields a little bit guys so it, it just doesn't make sense to go for this on this guy because you'll be you're not going to concussive shot until you've shot them with your gun a little bit and if you've shot them with your gun a little bit their shield is almost gone again the boss targets have big bars of armor so you're going to want to you know do some good damage to those bosses from far so yeah armor is looking much more appealing at this point what I was going to say when custom shot is it's highly possible that this will be kind of like on my Vanguard where I just put one point in it and just using it for detonations. That is a very high possibility, but, you know, it looks like it gets very good as you level it, so it might be worth it. Um, frag grenade. Damage radius is 5 meters, and the area damage is 1,000, so obviously that's a, that's a big goddamn damage. You know, 1,000, that's, you know, really up there. Looking at custom shot, we're looking at 350. This is... A thousand and over a five meter radius. This is really not at the first point. That's only one point in it. Um, getting more nade capacity here. Direct damage a little bit more. That is nice. Uh, a little more direct damage or damage radius. Five meters is huge, but let's see if we get more radius upgrades later on. I probably would go for this, but let's see if there's more radius upgrades later on. Two more of them versus damage per second. So very similar to the Mass Effect 3 grenade. Um, very similar actually in this evolution. Um, having two or doing damage over time. This is also a decision that's going to really depend on how you spec in the concussive shot because obviously if you were to take this, then it's like you are going to have a shitload. You'd probably rather have the damage over time versus this, you know, then you might prefer to get the, um, you know, more grenades here. But this is only two, so let's see guys I mean damage per second 45 over five seconds so you're basically talking you know you're basically talking like a little bit less than half of what this actually does over time so that, that is pretty good that's not bad but let's see um, yeah I mean I I I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Uh, it it's really going to depend on, like I said, if you were to pick this. Where is it? Yeah, if you were to pick this, I mean, definitely the damage over time looks appealing. If you don't pick that, this might look more appealing. Damage versus armor versus shields, armor all the way. That's definitely going to be the way to go. Remember, this down, <laughs> the biggest bars of armor you're going to encounter are going to be armor. So, you know, definitely gonna um want to have every edge you can get against them if you i mean i'm imagining now using this against like the mercenary group you would decimate them a big group of the freaking uh krogan or salarians or the 
and jab. This 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 is looking really good, guys. Thousand damage, and over. We haven't even at base. We haven't even specced yet. So this is going to be a ridiculous power to use against the enemies. Munitions training. Um. Weapon damage. Ten power. Uh. This is cool. So you get more power cell capacity in your passives. It looks like and more power damage. It's it's tough. The good news is that turbocharge looks really good. Frag grenade looks extremely good against the groups. And concussive shot looks like it definitely has its utility as your detonator. So that is good. Um, so the big conundrum is going to be: Are you going to go for power damage or weapon damage? Well. Good news is that the weapon is going to get a beefy buff just from using turbocharge. And the other good news is Frag Grenade is already doing a shitload of damage. This is already doing a pretty good amount of damage. So over here, um, I can't really say yet, guys. I mean, it is going to be nice to have a lot of these grenades. And the recharge time on turbocharge is pretty goddamn long. Um, grenades, again, you do have to use a pack for them. Uh, when it came to the human Vanguard and Mass Effect 3, most people, I would think, you know, would go for the power damage because nades were so good in that game. And then kind of, you know, get weapon damage where you, and Adrenaline Rush made your guns so good that it, the nade just felt better for cleaning up the big mobs of enemies. In this game, let's see. I don't know. Uh, weapon damage, power damage, all. So, yeah, I mean, I think off the bat, I'd probably go with this the extra nade and the more power damage because you are spamming concussive shot remember that um and you are going to use those grenades against big groups weapon reload speed weapon clip size weapon spare ammo gun damage boost melee damage boost each buff duration so you'll get a longer um turbo charge that's pretty good in that case, I mean, again, this is a decision that's going to highly bank on the gun you choose, obviously. If you want more clip size and spare ammo, reload, um, or do you just want to do more damage, again, this is highly going to depend on the gun you choose. That's going to depend on what guns you have, so I'm not going to really comment on that. Um, defense buff per shot, max defense debuff. Um, hmm. Defense debuff per shot. Max defense, diva. Focusing fire on enemy target causes them to take more damage from all sources. That's cool. 20%. Uh, wow, that's interesting. This is a really um, shotgun pellet spread reduction. That's that's a pretty uh, <laughs> specific choice for that last evolution. Um, weapon accuracy, weapon stability, weapon accuracy. Again, these are all going to depend on the gun you choose, guys, and that's going to depend on what gun you have. But looking at it, I mean, that debuff could be pretty damn good. You could get it, ultimately, you could have a 24% debuff on the enemy. That's defense per shot, so I'm assuming we're talking, like, fast-firing guns to get that debuff going as fast as possible. And this is obviously talking a little bit, well, is each pellet counting as a shot? Because then, you know, you know what I'm saying? If each pellet's counting as a shot from a shotgun then you could give this debuff eventually very fast. If it's not the case, and it just means one shot, then, you know, uh, shotguns will not benefit much from this, but they'll definitely benefit from that a little bit to be able to shoot it from far. Um, getting to fitness. Um, damage is more than Regen only that time. So obviously I'd pick that. You're not going to be mailing with this guy. Um... Damage resistance and cover, 50, again, with the vague wording, what does 50 mean? 50%, 50 points, like they don't say, so that is kind of annoying. The same thing with the Vanguard on the charge evolution, damage resistant, damage reduction, 75. Like, what the fuck does that mean? No one, <laughs> give me a, a percentage sign or something so I know what it means. Um, regen, delay reduction, and cover, 100%. That is, like, pretty goddamn good. That means you take cover, you can pretty much instantly get your shield back almost. 50% damage resistance while airborne, 100% damage resistance while evading. I like that. That sounds really good. That's more my play style because I don't play in cover too much, but I'm out moving around. This sounds really good. When you're doing those dodges, taking 100% more damage, and most of the time when you're doing those dodges is when you're going to need the damage resistance. 
Right now, that looks way more appealing to me. I'm not going to go for that on this guy. Low health damage resistance. That is nice. But I may actually spec out of that last one. <clears throat> this looks really good. I don't know if I'll spec into this. One thing to keep in mind, though, is if you're using a gun that requires you to, and marksman in general, if you're using a gun that requires you to kind of hold steady fire, the airborne thing might be nice, but you're not going to want to be dodging too much. And if you're using, so you get my, if you're using like a, say, let's take the particle right from Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, you got to hold down that trigger for a long time to get the fire rate going so it does a lot of damage. So in that case, I'll be, I'll, I, this might be better because if I'm dodging all over the place for this buff, then, you know, I, I'm losing that high fire rate that I built up. But, and I do know there's a gun in this game that's basically the park rifle. It's an N7 weapon. I just unlocked it. Um, regen, delay reduction, and cover 100% damage resistance and cover 50. That's cool. I mean, mm, tough to say at this point. Again, like I said, if you're going to be using a gun similar to the park rifle, Mass Effect 3, which is in this game, there is a gun very similar to the park rifle then this might be better because if you're just in cover you're not dodging you're not jumping you can build up the fire rate with no problems this is this would be great on a shotgun class um but or if you want to jump up even the park even if you want to use a gun like the park rifle you jump up and you just hold our trigger while airborne you'll be taking 50 percent less damage so that is nice it's up in there. This seems like it'd be more fun though, the dodging rather than sitting in cover. Yeah. So to be honest, I don't know what I'm gonna end up choosing. Um, it's tough to say. These last everything is looking good, that's the good news. But just my opinions on the evolutions at first glance. And full build coming your way as soon as it's, you know, level 20. Alright, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to rate, like, comment, subscribe. If you did enjoy this, I'm gonna do this first glance kind of impressions for all these characters and all the guns too but um yeah you guys tell me what you think below i'm curious let's figure this out together all right guys have a great day